Alright, in this video we're taking a look at Jerry Garcia's guitar solo on Scarlet Begonias from 62189. Alright, so the solo is over the uh, chords to the verse chord progression, and it starts on an E. But we're actually, he's got a pickup phrase, so it starts on the B chord leading in to the E. And the phrase sounds like this. All right, slower. All right, so you can either view this as being a part of the B major pentatonic scale with the inclusion of that E for anticipating the E chord, or you can see it as out of the E major pentatonic or E major blue scale. Either way, we have nine, 10, 11 on the fifth, followed by the 9 on the 4th, then 11 on the 4th, 9 on the 3rd, 11 on the 4th. All right, so it sounds like on the recording that um, Jerry picks each note. Um, you can either pick each note or you can play it as a hammer-on. I like that legato sound. All right, and then we start with the E beginning of the verse chord progression and uh, here's the first phrase all right so over that first measure E to B we have If you saw either my video on the Mars Hotel or the uh, Winterland 74 Scarlet Begonias, um, you'll know that Jerry often um, cited the melody or quoted the melody in the solo. And in this case, it's kind of what he's doing. So we're in this G cage shape of an E major chord. And then we have the melody right here. The melody would sound something like this. So we're starting on that E, ninth fret of the third string, then we're going up to an F sharp, and then we're going to pull off and slide down to the eighth fret, which is a D sharp, and that's the third of B. And so that's where the chord switches to a B chord. And now if you look at um, our B triad, just need this little fragment right here. So ninth of the fourth, eighth on the third, eleventh on the third. And so he's playing the uh, root and then we have third root, third root, and then we're gonna pull off from the nine to the eighth and then play that eighth fret again which is the major third of the B chord. So we have All right, now this is cool right here. He plays. 
So you can look at this as part of an A triad shape. So right here we're still playing over the B chord and leading into the E. So it's for all intents and purposes B mixolydian. So out of the E major scale or B mixolydian mode we have the B major and A major triads. And over a B mixolydian chord common to play the um, B major and A major triads as a triad pair because with the inclusion of the A major triad you get the 9th, the 11th, and the flat 7. And that flat 7 is the note that makes it mixolydian. Alright, so what he's doing is to give it some movement to that E chord, he's playing so sliding into the C sharp from the fret below it, so 10 into 11 on the 4th string, then pulling off from 10 to 9 on the 2nd string. And then that ninth fret is our G sharp, the major 3rd of E. Alright, so here's the next phrase starting with that pickup. Alright, so after we do this move, we have So we're landing on the B for the B chord. It's the 12th fret of the second string. And then we're playing around this B triad shape. So 12th fret on the 2nd, 11th fret on the 1st, 14th fret on the 1st. So same notes as this one, just an octave higher. <clears throat> and then we can fill in the notes around it for B mixolydian. And we have... So after we play, he's starting on that 14th fret of the first string, which is an F sharp. It's the fifth of a B chord, and he's playing this sequence. So it's four notes down the scale, then you start at the um, next note. So we have 14, 12, 11 on the first string, then 14th fret on the second string. Then we're going to go back to the 12th fret on the 1st string, 11, then 14, 12 on the 2nd string. But he's not starting on the downbeat with that sequence, he's starting on the uh of 1, so 1E e and uh. 1E e and uh. Alright, so after we have that sequence, then we go back to the 14th fret on the 2nd string, 11 on the 1st, 12 on the 2nd. So that's right out of that B triad shape, 3rd root. And we have... And then hear how it, he accents certain notes. Alright, now we get to the next part, which is the chords A. E, B, A, E, then we repeat that. E, and then B. Alright, so he's landing on the 14th fret of the second string, which is our C sharp, and that's the third of an A chord. And now let's let's visualize the shapes of the chords coming up. So we have this A, then we have an E, then a B. A. So it's the same shape as the B but down a whole step. E. The same shape as the A triad but on the ninth fret. Then back to A, E, then B. 
This is the same as the E shape and then A. Now here's the phrase. It's good to visualize those shapes and to actually make those shapes as you're playing them. Because if you watch Jerry play, he plays right out of the shapes. Alright, so we have the A. So go ahead and picture that B shape. And then we're going to move that down a whole step. And we play over the A and then for the E chord we have this bar on the ninth frets of the fourth, third, and second strings. Then we're gonna fill in some extra notes. So we have the eleventh fret on the third string. So those two measures. Right, then for the A, we use this triad shape right here in ninth position. So we land on the 10th fret on the second string, A. Then we have 11 on the 4th, 9 on the 3rd, 10, pull off 9 on the 2nd string. Then we're going to play out of this E triad. Then we slide down to B, then slide that down a whole step to A, then we're going to pull off from 7 to 6 on the 3rd string, then slide 7 to 9 on the 4th, then 9, 8, 7, slide down to 6 on the 4th string, then we hit our low E. So the trickiest part for this is probably that E triad because you need to roll your finger down and then use it to shift positions. So I kind of roll it off and then slide down to the seventh position. Alright now over the B chord that's leading back into the E, we're going to play this. Alright so we start with a sequence again. So if you picture your B E K shape and you look at the E mixolydian mode right around that shape. You'll see this pattern. So we have one, two, three, four, then we start on the next note. It's the same one as this, but in reverse. Then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and that's where it stops, and then we play. And again, we're starting on the this time the of two, so we the downbeat is on that ninth fret, so we have then we land on the seventh fret of the fifth string E for the E chord, and we have So we're starting on that 7th fret of the 5th string, and then 7th fret on the 4th, sliding up to the 9th. That gets us in position for the uh, G cage shape of the E chord. Then we're going to use that, um, we're going to include that 11th fret on the 3rd string, and then the 10th fret on the 2nd string. 
Then we're going to pull off 11, 10, 9, slide down to 8 on the 3rd string, then the ninth fret on the 4th string. So we're around that B triad shape again. Then 8, 9, slide up to 11 on the 3rd, 11 on the 1st string. And that's our 6th interval. And you can picture that D shape. Then we move that shape down a whole step, play the ninth fret on the first string. All right, this next phrase sounds like this. All right, so we moved this shape down a whole step and then we use our first finger to play the seventh fret on the first string. Then we're going to bend the um, eighth fret on the second string up a half step. And so we're bending the flat third up to the major third. And Jerry does a lot of this in his blues playing. So just adding it um, in this context where he's playing mostly major, it gives it a cool little effect. So then we take the seventh fret on the fourth, slide it up to the ninth, we get back in the G cage shape position. And this time we have the inclusion of the twelfth fret on the second string, then ten, pull off to nine. 11, pull off to 9 on the 3rd string. Alright, now this is cool right here. We have... So we're over the B chord and he's going to play that um, flat 5 to the 5th. So if you think of like your uh, B minor pentatonic scale, you have that flat 5. So we're starting on that and we're hammering on to the natural fifth. Then we have the 12th fret on the second string, back to 11th on the third, then 11th on the first, then 12 on the second. So I'm not sure exactly how Jerry fingered this part, but this is how I'm doing it. So if you picture that D shape again for our B chord, And then our B triad, and then filling in the notes. So 12, 14 on the second, 11 on the first, 14 on the second, 11, 12 on the first. Then we repeat that 12th fret on the first string E, and we're on the A chord now for this section of chords. And we have. All right, so over the A, then over the E chord we have. Then we get in that B triad shape. And we're going to move that down a whole step. Then we get up here to the 14th fret and we have... Alright, so again you can visualize these shapes, the A, E, B, A. This time we're then, instead of going to this E, we're going to go up to the E cage shape of E chord, play the flat third to major third, and then the 12th fret on the first string, then 14 on the third string, slide up to 16, play the 16th fret of the first string, then we're going to land on the 14th fret of the first string, F sharp, and we're on the B chord, and we have this.
right, so if you picture this A shape of the, the caged A shape of our B chord, we're gonna play right out of that shape. All right, now this takes us into our last time around the chord progression. All right, so we have that pickup, 14th on the fifth, 13 on the fourth, 14 on the fourth. All right, so for this phrase we have, So for this, you can visualize the E major scale. In this case, it would be the D cage shape. And we have... But we're gonna play a chromatic note. This is the 15th fret on the third string and then bend that up a half a step to the B. And that's where the B chord comes in. So we're playing the root over the B chord. Then we have So after we bend that 15th fret up a half step, we're gonna pull off 16, 15, 14 on the third string, 16th fret on the fourth. Then we're gonna move up two frets and we have 18, 16, 18 on the third, 16 on the second. Then we walk up 16, 17, 19, 19 on the second. Then 17, pull off 16 on the first. So here you can picture it's out of the C cage shape or that little thinking of a D chord. And we have... So again, we're gonna include a chromatic note. Sliding the 18th fret into the 19th fret of the first string. Then we go down here to the 14th fret then 16 on the second. And we're back in that A cage shape of the B chord. All right, that's chromatic passing tone, 15 to 14. And then that leads into our A for the A chord. And again, we can look at these shapes. So A, E, B, A, E. slowly all right then a again so for the e we look at that a cage shape like we did for the b and we can fill in those notes. Here it's 987 on the third and 987 on the fourth. Then we land on the seventh fret of the sixth string, our root B, and we have. So that's a B triad. All right, now let me play the whole solo slowly.